Okay, very excited to be talking to Travis today. Travis is definitely an OG in the space. We really can't wait to hear his story. He's going to be bringing a really unique and interesting project, The Revenant, to Gamma, his Genesis collection on Bitcoin. So we're going to hear all things Travis. What makes the man, the artist? You know, essentially introduce yourself, go right back. Where did it all start? How did you become a creator? The Genesis story of Travis as an artist right up to this point of coming to Bitcoin. Go for it. Sure. Uh, thanks for having me, uh, Brett. I'm really excited to be uh, releasing some work on Gamma and uh, Bitcoin as well as some ordinals. Uh, I am a conceptual artist. I've been making digital art since the late 90s. Um, a lot of my work deals with aspects of like image manipulation, like self-perception and also like computerized labor. And um, I'm also quite interested in like the history of portraiture and like what it means to represent like a particular individual at a time period and place. So a lot of my work deals with uh, aspects of portraiture. Um, I actually was um, one of the, the first few artists who helped beta test Super Rare back in 2018. Um, I think I was like maybe the fourth person who actually minted work on there. And it, part of it was, I was really interested in trying to figure out how to solve this problem of like provenance and digital art and scarcity. And someone who was early on, you know, many of us back in the day would just, you know, sell our work to us maybe as like on a USB stick and through a gallerist or something like that. But there, there's always like something that is sort of like missing. Um, and I was learning about cryptocurrencies um, in like the mid 2010s. And later on, as like Ethereum came out and Bitcoin became more popular around like 2017, I sort of like dived back into it and realized that, you know, these tokens are just like certificates of authenticity. You know, they, they just like prove ownership. It's just like a giant ledger and your name is here and you own this thing. And that, that just like sort of like snapped for me. And I was wondering if like, oh, are, are there artists using this, you know, to like make work about the blockchain or are there artists, you know, using this as a way to market their work? And uh, I joined this like Telegram channel. I knew like one other artist on there, Jessica Angel. And I just sort of got introduced to like Rare Pepe's and all these people. I made a Rare Pepe in 2018. And um, that was like how it sort of all like started in relationship to, um, you know, like blockchain and everything. Really interesting. So many different things to unpack there. Let's circle back to something that you said at the start about how you like to use image manipulation and really fascinated by portraiture. What do you think that is? Where do you think that stemmed from? And yeah, I suppose where are those inspirations derived from? Yeah, it's a, it's a great question. Um, I also work professionally as a photo retoucher and um, I was really into like Photoshop uh, within my art practice in the around like 98 or so. And I just got so good at it that I actually started accepting like freelance jobs, you know, editing images for like photographers. And then I got into sort of like stock photography and um, more than it was like, portraiture and fashion and now I do a lot of like campaigns for major labels and brands in which I cannot talk about because I sign a lot of NDAs um, but uh, a lot of those things I was doing for the companies I would get really interested in like all of these especially in relationship to like portraiture and beauty and fashion it's like there's all these imperfections that are removed from photographs like not only like facial ones, but aspects of like backgrounds and clothing that I often wonder like, where did these things go? And like, what are we doing to ourselves? Like, we're just like removing all these things that make us unique from one another um, and really sort of like define us. Uh, so I actually started just collecting these things secretly, like I had like folders and like moles and blemishes and stray hairs. And I would just start to sort of like arrange them and they almost looked like these like cosmic weird floating things. Um, and uh, that was like a lot of my, my earlier work, which was sort of like minimal at the time. And like, they just sort of like built like layer upon like layer. And I, I was almost interested in this sort of like remnant portrait, if you will, like this thing that sort of like, existed in this space but then it disappears as like all of it's becoming erased and, and, and put out there and also like sort of like the relationship of how 
especially like e-commerce, there's all of these images, especially like portraiture and like fashion. It's just like, it's, it's pumped out there and it exists online for such like a small amount of time. And then it just like sort of disappears. I was always like really curious about this. It's like, there's just like huge proliferation of like imagery. And then it's just like proof it's gone. Like, where does it go? Like, where does it live or how does it die? Um, so, you know, the, the idea of like this weird sort of like digital life slash death uh, has always interested me. Yeah, that is fascinating. And it's funny, you're talking, you know, that you've been working on that since the late 90s and then Ethereum went live in sort of 2014 and then Super Air 2019 or tw late 2018, did you say? Yeah. It's quite the journey. Yeah. 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 That's quite the journey. How have you, how has your art or how has that concept evolved as that time has gone on for you? Yeah, I, I mean, um, I, I tend to work in like specific bodies uh, as a conceptual artist. I'll tackle like various, um, <laughs> what I sort of come up with is like weird conceptual problems that I attempt to solve in, in, in each work. Like, an earlier series which was called detouched which is a word i sort of like made up play off the word retouch um and that was the one which they're extremely minimal i was just like erasing someone's entire face so the entire photograph as a you know those are more photographic um is only left with like the actual imperfections so you like sort of like look at it and start to see these weird remnants and you actually realize it's like part of a person, but they're like this like floating field. So there's always like this sort of like going in and and, and coming out, uh, if you will. And a lot of that just like sort of stems from uh, that series in particular and just like kind of like going back and forth between like these ideas of like image manipulation and like what it means to represent someone and you know, like what are all these like little floating things these these digital remnants of ourselves not only like photographic but also like you know data as well or like you think about relationship to you know a lot of projects now it's like metadata the information tied to images or, or projects yeah well it must be interesting for you to track the journey of being a digital artist that early because digital art still is quite a new concept to a lot of art collectors it is, um, you know, the, there's definitely always sort of like a certain groups, um, you know, there's like the net artists, like new media artists, you know, like back in the day, a lot of ourselves would call it, you know, computer art. And, you know, we all sort of like stuck together in, in many ways, but there was always like the sort of like push, to, you know, have it become accepted more widely or, or in a more serious um, manner and you know that that's kind of like the same with any sort of medium throughout history and like you know if you think of like photography as an example it's like it was not considered art uh for the longest time you know like maybe in the, the, until like the 1970s um that uh, a lot of artists were really like seriously um like pushing through it and then getting their work out there and shown in like galleries and museums and making amazing work so I think uh, digital art, uh, you know, as a catch-all term for the larger uh, things that are happening right now is, you know, having a bit of a moment uh, and I hope it'll like continue so. Well, definitely. It's certainly a new form of collecting and it is a beautiful segue into what you're doing on Bitcoin because putting it on chain and with ordinals, with inscribing, is a, it's almost the most tangible or you know the most physical of digital collectibles. Tell us about your journey to Bitcoin and then deciding on the project, the Revenant. And then we can dive right into it. Sure. Um, yeah. I mean, I think like most people, you know, Bitcoin is the first cryptocurrency you you hear about. It was like the the first uh, successful digital currency that's still around today. And um, for me, it was the, the one I learned about and got really interested in and, and even before um you know nfts were a thing like people would and i don't know what the right terminology would be but they would you know include text or metadata within like the transaction and it would sort of live in there and or people were able to make like ascii art in a way on um, so like early bitcoin transactions and i always thought that was pretty amazing and, and wanted to um do something with that but it, it never sort of came about just because my work is so image reliant like i most of my projects work in relationship to 
a portrait or an image. Um, and uh, I've just been sort of holding on to this idea for quite some time. A lot of my projects that I often work on for like months, if not years, like I have another one, I've been on almost year five now. Uh, and I, I haven't uh, released it yet. And the, the Revenant was, I started really getting into it probably like late 2022. Um, I think just that was just when like ordinals were just like starting to, to come about. Um, and uh, it, it's funny to see the explosion of them recently. Um, so the, the idea of the Revenant is really a story about Bitcoin, but it's also a story about like digital art and sort of like the perseverance among repeated dismissals and skepticism. And um, I call it the Revenant and the tagline is like sovereign portraits for a faceless future. Uh, and the word remnant, it refers to something that is returned after a death or an extended absence. And I sort of like leverage that metaphor to talk about like the perseverance of the Bitcoin blockchain. But also because in the news media, it's been proclaimed dead or worthless, like more than 470 sometimes. Um, and this was even going on in like 2017 and it would just like hear like the news cycles like it just it just really found it interesting that people really wanted to hate it like as a technology it, it almost like became like personified in a way um and everyone just like they, they kind of hoped that if they said it enough that it would die um and it made me think about digital art as well or Art in general, especially in the United States, is, is not really a widely cultural thing that people really engage with on a day to day basis and compared to maybe other countries. Um, as I know, like many artists who make digital work, have been told, oh, like, why are you doing this? Why aren't you making paintings? You know, it's like digital art, like, that's not worth anything. Um, so like, there's like that correlation there that I, I think about uh, a lot. Um, but uh, thinking about the relationship of like metadata and all of these new sources, and I was able to accumulate, you know, a good range of every single time someone had posted, you know, oh, Bitcoin is dead, you know, da 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 da, it is worthless. This is why it can't be a currency. And I started collecting all of these, and I really wanted to make a project that was, you know about that but also like these portraits so there's like portrait tied to each one of these statements now uh so it's almost like this not quite a death portrait in a way but i see it as like more like a portrait of like actually coming back because the thing that happened with bitcoin is like it, it didn't die you know as much as artists we didn't die when we're making digital art we just you, you keep going you know because it's something you you believe in so um that was like sort of like the the, the start of the project there well, let's pull up your website and you can navigate through it and I guess, you know, show off, do give some reveals, talk to us about the artwork, talk to us more deeply about the concept. It was great to hear about that Bitcoin origin or that Bitcoin ethos and how you have been working on it for so long. So I'll pull that up now. Sure. Yeah. Do you want me to talk more about the, the Revenant specifically? Well, yeah, go. Look, you can start from where you like. Talk to us about you know what we're looking at here, and then jump into the revenant. Sure. Uh, what we're looking at here is um, most of my uh, projects I document on my uh, website. Um, I've like exhibited uh, rather extensively, so there's a lot of like my writing on here and work from previous series. You know, I can just kind of quickly uh, give some like nice visuals of like some of my earlier work like my detouch series, just to give like people an idea of like some of the imperfections uh, that I was talking about that I would actually like remove from photographs. And, you know, some of the early ones started out very like minimal um, where it was just like someone's face. Uh, but then like, I would often start to like layer like other people's faces over them. Like this one was actually a commission um, for the drawing center in New York City. They actually did an exhibition uh, called Day Job. 
uh, and for the exhibition, they create artists whose day job uh, had sort of influenced their practice in some way. Uh, so for this one, I actually photographed the entire staff at the drawing center and uh, through my process, you know, retouched out their entire face and overlaid like all 16 employees over like one single image. Uh, so this is sort of like a nice piece to show um, from some more like the, the beginning of my series. Um, some of the work I might be more well known for on super rare is like my uh, color balance work, which started to integrate color adjustments that I would actually borrow um, from uh, these various freelance jobs as well. Um, so some of these here actually um, pull from conversations uh, that I would actually have from art directors. Uh, and a lot of these conversations sometimes end up being like these weird, absurd discussions about what needs to be done to make an image more beautiful uh, in a way, but often uh, certain people don't have like the right, uh, I don't want to say like skills, but the right words to describe what they want. So sometimes they would say something like no cookie cutter or not very pretty or I'm feeling like the yellow is creeping up in my light ends. Uh, and I, I just, just made like a notebook of all of these really absurd um, sort of phrases uh, that I happened upon and they ended up being um, titles for um, much of this work. Um, yeah, like this uh, one here on the far right, that's like the, sort of like the purple with lips um, that just, literally something someone told me once they said try not to make it look like a coke party um <laughs> so, so, so some of these are uh, a bit uh entertaining and far-fetched this was from uh some shots from a solo show in uh, brooklyn from a, a couple years back oh uh i i want to show like some of these because it, it sort of gives people like a backdrop of um where i'm coming at with like the revenant because like a lot of the works are very sort of like colorful and like have these very specific titles that tied to like this instance or this event that happened but i'm sort of like you know like moving people's words around to say something a bit different i was going to say you clearly very intentionally select every aspect of your work and and that's why perhaps it takes that extra amount of time but you it's almost like you collect these ideas or collect these experiences and then bring them to your art would that be sort of right yeah it, yeah, yeah. There, there's definitely a, a large sort of like collection or research uh, phase for every project that it, it lasts how long ever it needs to last you know like sometimes they're like faster ones sometimes they're over many years um a lot of projects i'm sort of like working in conjunction with others they're sort of like developing over time um i'm, I'm usually working on like five to ten things at the same time <laughs> It's, it's like part of my process um and I, I just wanted to show uh this series really quick because i i feel like this one is like also like a nice precursor um for the revenant because um uh it, it sort of like made me think about um the the reference pieces for the revenant uh this work is called familiar faces and you can kind of see like visually it, it it's um uh, a bit similar to my color balance except removing all of the color uh, a lot of these works actually started out um from layer masks like if people are familiar with photoshop and how that works when you have like a layer mask for an adjustment the mask itself is only in black and white uh, and you can only view that if you want to to get like the mask perfect a lot of masks are like made really quickly and but if you're working on a lot of portraits or sometimes the mask itself reveals like some sort of like human-esque or character-like form uh and I, I really loved how these looked like um a lot of my work has like a minimalist bend to it uh that i'm trying to reduce like the work the aspects of the work just like to the bare minimum that it really needs and just like strip everything else away um uh so familiar faces actually started out um uh during the pandemic and it, it's a play on words where um where i'm at 
I'm right next to New York City. I used to live in Brooklyn for nine years, but we moved to New Jersey in 2016. And uh, it's still sort of like this weird realm of like suburban slash urban because I can get to Manhattan quite quickly, but we're like somewhat removed. And I was still able to go on walks during the beginning of the pandemic, but just because of you know what was happening, everyone who had a familiar face was no longer familiar in a way. So it was like, you knew them, but you just, you didn't want to get close to them. There's like this weird distance either because of like fear or a physical mass. So um, that's where like this work sort of came about. It's like, you know, probably more of my sort of like more of an eerie slash haunting series. Uh, but I, I still really love them because like these, these weird sort of like characters or not quite human like but have like these weird faces but also seem like they are cloud like or might sort of dissolve in some way <clears throat> uh and like the title of these each one of these is like a title from a song that i was actually listening to on my walks uh so this one is um um oh god i'm gonna forget now uh it's a some lyrics from one of the nirvana songs it's like um it's less dangerous with the lights out so I'll sort of jump into uh, the Revenant here. Um, so there's uh, almost 500 pieces in this series. The exact number, actually, I think it's 476 too. I think my website says 475. Um, but each one is pertaining to an exact instance when someone has claimed that Bitcoin was dead or worthless, which were documented, started out, I think it was like, 2010 was the first instance back when Bitcoin was like 23 cents, <laughs> which is crazy mm -hmm. uh, when you think about it. Uh, except uh, I'm only sort of taking certain aspects of that either headline and or actual, you know, full body of text that they wrote and moving some of the words around. I'm keeping some of them to be either like positive or like ambiguous or some of them are still you know, like detrimental in some ways uh but sort of like play on uh certain things so um like this one right here this gray piece this one is dying whatever um and this one here is wired tired expired so i was thinking about you know what should this work look like if it's about bitcoin it's sort of about death like digital art you know like what are like the bare aspects that it really should represent and I, you know like one i wanted an anonymous portrait you know you, you think about like tied to like cryptocurrencies and anonymity or like sovereignty you know it, it's still representing someone but you don't know who the exact person is uh, so all these like portraits are um like synthetic based on synthetic photographs or like ai imagery uh anonymous portraits and the other part was like i wanted to like reduce like the works into like bits in a way like almost like you know tying it to like the like, binary code also you know bitcoin itself it's like usually represented by a square so even though many of these are all multiple colors each one is only two colors uh so they're all quite small uh, which is nice because uh, that's how we have to inscript things for Bitcoin. Uh, I think the max of these is like 14 kilobytes. Yeah, that's really interesting. And you can see the cohesion or some of your earlier works. And I'm glad that you did go through them because you can see some of that tie into these works just with, yeah, that just even jumping back to the familiar faces, just some of the, that, that, I guess, um, What's the right way? Like ghost, ghostly, ghost-like kind of portraiture, mm -hmm. and then your that color work as well. Some of those same tones are coming across in some of these pieces. Yeah, I, I really wanted to bring in like both of those bodies of work into this series because they're like really strong projects, and I really wanted to like continue those and and but like move them into like a new direction because um, I have like done bitmap pieces before, um, but like. I really wanted to see like what I can kind of get away with um, to like sort of like tie in like these like anonymous figures like relating to like zeros and ones, but also like have this like weird 
figure almost like coming out of a cloud or like going into a cloud, which was the other reason I wanted them to be uh, gifts because like there's like that nice like cyclical nature of like a gift. Like it just like, it keeps going. Like, and it's like one of like the oldest image formats, like gifts are not going to die. <laughs> it's like, there are so many people making like animated gifts that like, there's like no way that people would let them die. Uh, so I, I, I really like those like little like, extra like bits of things that I think really like make this work really nice. Totally. Well, they're going to live on Bitcoin as well. So it really is, you know, for the foreseeable future, eternalizing them as they continue to live, which is funny because it's a bit of a juxtaposition to that ghost-like appearance of them or that one that you said before, well, uh, I can't remember what it was called, like dead, whatever. It's kind of like a, a yeah, a nice, interesting kind of, um, contradictions oh, yeah. in the title as well. Yeah, dying, whatever. Um, yeah, uh, the one at the top right, which I really love, is the infinite supply mm. of new people, or like not built to last. Um, mm. Dollars are killing. Yeah, uh, one of the the first ones, uh, which is also my favorite. This one is uh, this red one here. This is titled "Be a Currency." And it seems like naming your work is very important to you as well. You must put a lot of effort and intention and thought process behind that as well. Uh, it, it's true. Um, pretty much all my works have specific titles, even within larger series. Like I, um, 2022, I did like a series of more than a thousand pieces and each one had a, a unique title in which no single word was repeated. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, yeah, oftentimes I might even think more about the titles than sometimes creating the, the, the visual aspects. I, I go back and forth. Um, so, yeah, that is why, one of the reasons I, I spent a lot of time on the work. Um, yeah, like these ones here, it's like Grand Technological Community, uh, Dead Insider, Ash Heap, uh, Avoid the Boom. And you mentioned on your website you've done you, you've done some writing as well. Is there a, a literature type background that ties in and is why you enjoy naming them and think more deeply about that as well? I, I, part of it is is like if I had to choose one word to explain what my work is about, the word would be finitude. And you know, of course, I have to unpack that. You know, what I mean is you know existence. So most of my work is these weird sort of existential questions about existence. Um, like I have this piece, I don't think it's on my website, but it's an old one and it's called the growing metaphysical void at the center of my bedroom ceiling. Uh, so a lot of my projects are like, okay, it's like, what, what, what does it mean? You know, like Bitcoin, what would it mean to exist on Bitcoin? Like, I, I like the fact that these works would possibly never die unless Bitcoin itself dies, you know, which is entirely possible with perhaps quantum computing. We don't know, um, you know, at, at current standard, it's not. Um, but, you know, I am also someone who's quite aware that, you know, we like to think of the blockchain as permanent, but there, there may be something beyond that. We don't know. Uh, so, yeah, I, I'm not sure if that uh, answers your question exactly. But No, it totally does. And I agree. And I think it's always really important to to think about that and sort of be philosophical and understand that really nothing is permanent when, when it comes down to it in life but you can mm -hmm. we can sort of speculate on the facts that we know now and think okay we're putting these files on chain we're putting them on bitcoin because it's the it is i suppose you know the best option for preserving work that we have currently in 2024 and as we start to wrap up is there anything that I didn't ask you that you'd like to share about the project or for anyone watching to learn a little bit more about you? I can see some, you know, physical art behind you. So obviously, and you've shown us that you've exhibited work too. So you play in the physical and the digital realm, but yeah, anything that I didn't ask that you'd like to share about yourself as a creator or the Revenant or anything else? Oh God, it's hard. It's like, you know, it's, sometimes I feel like I'm not someone who, talks a lot about my work uh, but then like other times i'm just like oh yeah i could always talk about this and this and this um 
uh, maybe uh, just to give the people some other background, which I, I didn't get a chance to talk about, and which we don't have to, enough to talk about here. But um, in 2013, I think one of my most uh, favorite experiences was um, I got to be on this artist residency in Switzerland. And I was there for six months um, in Basel, but I was uh, traveling to the Large Hadron Collider uh, near Geneva at CERN. Um, and for people who don't know what that is, it's like the giant particle accelerator and particle detectors uh, there underground. Because uh, all my work, um, you know, interested in relationship of like physics and like particles and these like little things, you know, kind of like thing about imperfections that come together and make these other things. And um, uh, that that in itself was beyond life changing and amazing and is deeply like influenced my work. So like, that's where I, I think I go into like really deep dive and wanting to like research stuff uh, often uh, also stem, stems from there. I love that, that little scientific influence. That's a really interesting tidbit. Travis, it's been a pleasure to dive into you as a person as an and as an artist and also looking at your bodies of work or some of them at least, and then talking about The Revenant. We can't wait for the release on Gamma. Thanks so much for your time today. Oh, thank you so much, Brett. I, I appreciate and uh, you know really enjoyed talking with you tonight and uh, looking forward to having the work on Gamma. And it's been amazing to work with you guys.